I V M. अचित कहिए आज किस चीज के बारे में बात करेंगे आज किसी बड़ी इम्पोर्टेंट चीज के बारे में बात करेंगे आ, ये भी ठीक है फिर कुछ इम्पोर्टेंट चीज के बारे में बात कर लेते हैं शादी ब्याह के बारे में आपका क्या ख्याल है ये वाली चीज नहीं थोड़ी अलग चीज तो आज हम चीज के बारे में बात करेंगे और 100% परसेंट श्योर इंडिजिनस चीज विथ डॉक्टर कुरुश सलाल कुरुश इज एन आर्कोलॉजिस्ट हिस्टोरियन फूड एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट ही इज ए पी एच डी ऑन द अर्ली आई एज फ्रॉम पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी Kurush also owns Katie's Kitchen, a beloved and popular Mumbai catering services specializing in ethnic Parsi food. So, जो भी बॉम्बे में जाए, और I don't think तो मतलब आप अगर food space में हो और आपने Dr. Kurush Talal का नाम नहीं सुना है, Kurush, absolute honor to have you. And just quickly, just telling you about this as well. Because since the time we started our podcast, we've been thinking कि we मतलब अच्छे तो मैंने काफी बारे बात की कि यार let's have Kurush, let's have Kurush. But they're like, but Which topic? Like, and then we're like, but Kurush can talk about all the things. But then we said, "Ki nahi." Sab chhisu baate kar lenge. I'm sure Kurush will get bored of us eventually. So let's call him for very important cheese, choki hai cheese. <laughs> so we'll talk about the indigenous cheese. But before we get into indigenous cheese, both of us were curious. If you look back, what family childhood influence led you to getting into the food history and anthropology? Uh, the reason of asking this question because. You know, in the modern times, people like us, some Jawan Londe, who say, Jawan, okay, everybody is now on food history. Sab ko history mein banne ka hai. But when you were growing up, I'm sure it probably was something unheard of for uh, many. So there was no such thing as a food historian in India when I was growing up. Uh, the earliest food historian was Pushpesh Pant. To some extent, you know, a couple of others at that time, like K T Achaya, dabbled in food history. Uh, it was only much later that Musina Mukadam actually did a PhD in food history, and you know, we started getting some very serious uh, people from history doing food history. There are see, there are a lot of reasons. पहली तो बात ऐसी है कि food is something यार तुम उसके ऊपर काम करने जाओ तो उसको तुम कबाड़ में नहीं रख सकते हो, वो खराब हो जाएगा. इसकी limited shelf life रहती है. When you start studying food, you have to repeatedly study these things. You have to look at them time and again. So people don't want to look at it. Also. फूड इज मेड बाई डिफरेंट पीपल डिफरेंटली तुम एक डिश का नाम लो और दस घरों में जाओ तो दस घर अलग अलग थोड़ा सा ट्वीक करते हैं उसको ऐसे वैसे फिर फूड हिस्टोरियन बोलता है कि मेरे पास डेटा बेस तो फिर वो बढ़ते ही जाता है और कोई एंडिंग ही नहीं है तो पीपल डोंट वॉन्ट टू गेट इन टू दिस इट्स अ टफ सब्जेक्ट टू गेट इन टू दिंक ऑन दी अदर हैंड एवरीबडी थिंक्स क्या मैंने बहुत सारी बिरयानी खा ली तभी मैं फूड हिस्टोरियन बन गया तो यू नो देर आर दिस टू एक्सट्रीम परस्पेक्टिव I grew up in a house. My mother was an archaeologist, and she came from a very long line of very good cooks. So I keep telling people that you know you can train a good cook, but great cooks are born. And uh, people might be offended by this, but that is a fact. And you know either you've got it or you ain't got it. You can train a very good cook, but you can't train that you know who jo andar se jo spark hota hai na, ab cook who can cook in his head. Say isme thoda ye dala, thoda wo dala, thoda jira nee nee, jira nee isme. Isme thaniya ka powder chana chahiye. and you're cooking in your head and you're thinking about it so she came from that kind of a lineage of cooks she was also fascinated with history and archaeology so she did an ma and a phd in archaeology at a time when women didn't really get into this subject went out and did field work when women didn't do this at all in india you know uh, women were supposed to be kachchi kalis and very kaula and wo dhoop mein kaise kaam karenge she worked on the in the rajasthan desert on the indo pakistan border conducted her own excavations at that time so i grew up on all the wrong stories i keep jokingly saying i blame my mother for my career trajectory ki uh, i grew up on all these stories of ashoka maurya and alexander's invasion on the other hand there was so much good food in the house my dad was a shippy so my mom traveled with him and went abroad and you know in the 70s there was very little food influence in india from outside and traveling abroad seeing the world and eating food over there this opened up her horizons this completely changed the way she looked at food so coming from a good food background and then looking at it this way so there was you know there was always good food at home and history was something that was taken very seriously so one automatically became part of the food business at home when my mother launched her food business and uh, i always wanted to be an archaeologist so uh, it was kind of very kya bolte na these two paths were there archaeology for the mind पेट पूजा के लिए फूड बिकॉज 
यू हैव टू हैव अ रूफ अबव योर हेड यू हैव टू पे द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल्स भैया कितना भी तुम आर्कियोलॉजी में बड़े बड़े तीर अंदाज बनो यू हैव टू अल्टीमेटली पे एम टी एन एल फॉर टेलीफोन लाइन एंड वोडाफोन फॉर योर मोबाइल फोन सो यू हैव टू मेक योर मनी सम बेस्ट द आइडिया वॉज टू डू आर्कियोलॉजी फॉर द सोल एंड टू केटरिंग फॉर द हार्ट एंड देन माई वाइफ रिया टोल मी टू थ्री टाइम्स एंड नो तुम इतना जानते हो फूड के बारे में फूड की हिस्ट्री के बारे में तुम क्यों नहीं उसके बारे में बात करते हो या उसके ऊपर कुछ काम करते हो एन ऐसे मेरी तो मेरी थोड़ी सी नॉलेज है थोड़ी सी नॉलेज है then a good friend of mine rushina said you know we should do something about this so uh, uh, she said you know you should talk about the archaeology of food maine kaha chhod hai itni badi topic itna bada research kon karne baithne wala hai and she said chalo aisa karte hai ki we'll uh, design a menu some dish from mogal period some dish from sultanate period some dish that the kolis used to make before the portuguese came aise 8 10 dishes try karte hai of different eras and we'll try and make a pop up so i said oh, this is a fun idea इसमें मजा आएगा कि कौन से स्पाइसेस थे कौन से ग्रेन्स थे कौन सी दाल थी ज्यादा करके मीट क्या खाते थे ऐसे ठीक है देन अबाउट एट डेज बिफोर वी व टू हैव द लंच बाय द वे वी हैव सोल्ड टिकट्स एंड वी हैव अनाउंस दैट यू विल बी स्पीकिंग ऑन द आर्कियोलॉजी ऑफ फूड बिफोर दैट मैं पागल हो गए लेकर तुम लोग किधर से आने वाले हाउ इज दिस गुण हैपन ऑल्सो सो आई थॉट चलो गूगल गूगल इज एवरीबडी सेवियर हम बैठ जाएंगे एक आध दिन गूगल पे तो आर्कियोलॉजी ऑफ फूड इन इंडिया करेंगे इंडियन आर्कियोलॉजी करेंगे फूड टैग लगा देंगे तो हो गया काम अपना एंड दैट वाज व्हेन आई केम फॉर अ वेरी रूड शॉप वेरी रूड मतलब ट्रिमेंडसली रूड आई स्पेंड एन एंटायर डे एंड देर वाज नथिंग ऑन द आर्कियोलॉजी ऑफ फूड इन इंडिया हाउ तो मैं बोला ये तो सुसाइड है हाँ तो अपन खुद के हाथ से खुद के पैर पर कुराड़ी मार दी अपन अब क्या करना है सो आई एक्चुअली सैट डाउन एन आई टुक Two three hours to myself, you know, trying to be very. Uh, I mean, now that I think of it, I was trying to be some bada gyani and saying, let's honestly put down together. Okay, what should be food? Me, what should be done? You have done archaeology. You have eaten so much food. You have read so much about food. So, what should be there in the archaeology of food? And I realized that archaeology of food has done a lot of work. Only they have put food in the archaeology of food. Only they have put food in the archaeology of food. Only they have put food in the archaeology of food. Only they have put food in the archaeology of food. Only they have put food in the archaeology of food. Only they have put food in the archaeology of food. Only they have put food in the archaeology of food. Only they have put food in the Mm-hmm. This animal was cooked. That animal was not cooked. This animal was domesticated, but they are not saying that this animal was food. Similarly, for grains, लोगों ने pottery के ऊपर काम किया ये pottery storage के लिए थी ये pottery cooking के लिए थी और लेकिन क्या cook करते थे अंदर कैसे cook करते थे उसके बारे में तो बात. So all of this data was there. It had just never been brought together as food. So I spent the next six days putting together my first PPT. I still have it, you know. And मैंने उसको जमा के रखा है. कि जब भी मेरे पर बहुत बड़े लगेंगे ना मुझे सो आई सी दैट पीपीटी ऐसे कि याद रखना कहाँ से आया इट्स अ हॉरेबल पीपीटी आई थिंक टुडे बट आई रियलाइज के सर्टेन बेसिक थिंग्स दैट वर देयर दैट डे दो बीन व्हाट आई हैव बीन वर्किंग ऑन एवर सिंस सो यू नो बेसिकली गाइस दैट बिकेम द क्या बोलते पैलम सेट कि यहाँ से इसके ऊपर काम करना है और पढ़ना है बाहर गाँव में क्या लोग करते हैं कैसे करते हैं इसमें क्या क्या डालते हैं फिर मालूम पड़ा कि इंडिया में तो इतिहास एज इट इज कम है और खाने का इतिहास तो है ही नहीं वर्चुअली यू नो बट बड़े बड़े तीर छोड़ते हैं खाने में हमारे पास ये है वो है ये ऑथेंटिक है ये ओरिजिनल है ये ट्रेडिशनल है बट यू नो इन स्क्रैच द सर्विस क्या तुम्हारी दादी बनाती थी दैट्स अबाउट इट उसके उसके आगे तो मालूम ही नहीं है कि कौन बनाता था कैसे बनाता था क्यों बनाता था सो दीज थिंग्स आर यू नो थिंग्स देन वी गेट वेरी अपसेट अरे ये मेरी फैमिली ट्रेडिशन है हाँ हो सकता है कि आपकी फैमिली ट्रेडिशन है बट दैट डजेंट मेक इट हिस्ट्री सो वन रियलाइज दैट इट इज वीमेन हु हैव बीन द मेन पिलर्स ऑफ आवर फूड एंड दे हैव केप्ट आवर फूड अलाइव एंड दे हैव क्रिएटेड आवर फूड ट्रेडिशन इंटरेस्टिंगली कमर्शियली देखने जाओ तो कुक्स हैव ऑल बीन मेन ऑल द खान समाज इफ यू लुक एट एंड ऑल ऑफ दैम एंड ऑल द महाराज एंड ठाकुर दे हैव ऑल बीन मेन बट एट द सेम टाइम जो घरेलू खाना है घर का खाना है that has all been done by women and women have been mainly uneducated you know uh, there is a very beautiful statistic that i give when i teach sometimes that as recently as the 1870s 1880s 98% of the women in india were illiterate 98% so then how are they supposed to maintain that history history is all written record na to unke paas to oral history hai jo mother to daughter sikhai jati hai फिर वो डॉटर आगे जाके डॉटर इन लॉ बनती है उसके बहुत कुछ फिर से सीखना पड़ता है 
क्योंकि सास कहती है ऐसे नहीं वैसे करो ऐसे नहीं ऐसे करो फिर जब उसका खुद का किचन होता है एक दिन एक ना एक दिन जब वो खुद इंचार्ज ऑफ द किचन होती है तो उनकी स्टाइल तब निकलती है विच इज एन अमेलगमेशन ऑफ बोथ ऑफ दीज एंड हर ओन एक्सप्रेशन सो एवरी जनरेशन फूड इज चेंजिंग एंड वीमेन आर कीपिंग अवर फूड अलाइज ऑल द कुक बुक्स तुम इंडिया में देखोगे जो मेन कुक बुक्स अब है उनका हिस्ट्री इज बेसिकली हिस्ट्री ऑफ हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी ईयर्स हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी बनी हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी ईयर्स आई वुड से एंड उसके पहले जो कुक बुक्स है वो इन मीन साढ़े तीन है फॉर द लास्ट टू एंड हाफ थाउजेंड ईयर्स ऑफ इंडियन हिस्ट्री इफ यू लीव अड द लास्ट हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी ईयर्स वी डोंट इवन है हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी कुक बुक्स वर्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट शर्म की बात है ना बहुत बड़ी बट दैट्स आल्सो व्हाट यू मेंशन राइट कि हिस्ट्री ऐसी भी नहीं लिखी जाती है uh, वो खाने की हिस्ट्री तो खैर दूर की बात है अच्छा वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टेकन फॉर ग्रांटेड है ना सदा टेकन फॉर ग्रांटेड है खाते हैं सब लोग हैं हां खाते हैं तो कौन सी बड़ी बात है राइट करेक्ट अच्छा कुरुश वन थिंग यू एंड आई शेयर इज इवन माय फादर हैड अ बैकग्राउंड इन द शिपिंग इंडस्ट्री वो भी शिप ही थे उन्होंने भी पूरी दुनिया ट्रैवल किया शिप में एंड दैट्स हाउ I got influenced on trying new cuisines, trying new foods, and वो मेरी family में खाने के मामले में open mind इसलिए है because of the travel my parents did uh, during my childhood. You know that's a very big thing, Arshad. The more you travel, the more things you try out. The more you open your mind, the more it opens. absolutely. The more experiences you have, you know, the more you realize that if you eat each other's food, no, you'll stop trying to kill each other. That's my my logic. That should be the highlight that people should eat each other's food, love each other, not hate each other. That's a great. You know, sadaf. So uh, that... Aajkal, aajkal ye aisa hai na ki ham dekhte hain. Uh, everybody tends to be friends with people from their own community, their own religion. I find this very funny, because when I was growing up, aisa koi thay nahi Bombay mein. Uh, it didn't matter what religion you belong to, ke tum kaha se aate ho, kya khate ho. In school, my best friends. one was a bori muslim and the other was a, a hindu sindhi and he was vegetarian my bori muslim friend could not eat virtually anything but non veg and potatoes aur hum ek me ke ghar mein pade rehte the and aise kabhi nahi hua ke hamare vegetarian dost ko humne non veg khilaya aur aisa kabhi nahi hua ke uske ghar ja ke hum log bole nahi non veg khilao hame we lived very happily on what was there all of everybody's mother was like our mother ye sab lafda hi nahi tha jo abhi hai segregation tha so that that also brings me to the question as well that uh, what can we learn about how we ate from archaeology so agar hum past jayenge to what is the significance so the first thing and uh, this is the thing that kind of quite shocks people is that jo hum aajkal food khate hain mm-hmm. uska itihas sirf 11000 saal purana hai acha it is only since we started growing our own food that we have this kind of food right So as hunter gatherers before 11,000 years, we had a very different kind of food culture. आजकल का जो हमारा खाना है, all our food is built around at any given time one or two carbohydrates. अगर आप कोई भी खाना देखो, तो रोटी या पूरी या भाखरी से start करते हैं और चावल से खत्म करते हैं. हाँ. Sometimes there is just bhakri and sabji, or bhakri and dal, or puri and sabji, or paratha and whatever. Or sometimes there is just dal chawal. You come with me to Orissa. I will show you people who eat rice three times a day. Come with me to Konkan. I will show you rice three times a day. And Assam, me to there is no question of anything but rice three times a day. So you know all our meals are based around some carbohydrate. Or baki jo bhi sab kuch hai na, that is just to make the carbohydrate go down easily. So there's a very famous food anthropologist called Sidney Mintz. He has written a very interesting paper on this. That you know Indian food is essentially a carbohydrate. and a few things to make that carbohydrate taste a little different and go down easily and a lot of people get very upset in india about that nahi nahi hamara bahut bada tradition hai aisa waisa come with me to south india it's exactly the same thing it's about how much rice you eat in andhra if you don't make a mountain of rice in your plate to yaar tune khaya hi kya north mein jao aur kaho ki mujhe ek parathe mein ho jayega to log bolenge yaar mazak kar rahe ho yaar khana acha nahi tha kya paanch chhe parathe thus lo so you know it's basically that is our main food everything else is peripheral and that story is the story of people being made to grow their own food you know we all think that yaar a kitna noble farmer wo suraj ke niche bel ke piche hal chala raha hai ke haathon se anna bana raha hai bullshit 
नो फार्मर वॉन्ट्स टू फार्म इफ इज गिवन अ चॉइस अगर तुम उसको बोलोगे ना कि यार तुम्हें चपरासी की नौकरी देंगे और तुम्हारा घर कारोबार चल जाएगा वो पगार पे तो चपरासी कल का कल बन जाएगा बिकॉज नो बडी वॉन्ट्स टू वर्क लाइक अ मीनिया को देर इन द फील्ड इन द हीट इट्स अ हॉरिबल जॉब अर्चित यू नो वन ऑफ द वर्स्ट थिंग्स अबाउट फार्मिंग is once you have put your crop in the ground mm-hmm. then you have to go to your farm every day to keep an eye on it yeah so what are you basically doing you are watching grass grow that is what you are watching how exciting can it be to watch grass grow i'm telling you put wheat in a pot and spend one hour a day just watching your wheat as it's growing you'll go mad see if you have a cow for example yeah are yaar subah subah uthke tumhe wo cow dung saaf karna hai wo ghao ko nehlana hai aur doodh nikalna hai sham ko jab tum ghar lotoge after watching grass grow the whole day tumhe fir se wohi karna hai you have to shovel the bullshit you have to wash the cow and you have to milk the cow and there are no bank holidays there is no aaj eid hai aaj gai ko nahi milk karenge but kal diwali hai we'll skip nahi nahi bhai you have to milk the cow every day 365 days of the year so you know who wants to live that kind of life ye jo bade bade farmers hai unki baat alag hai unke paas nokar chakar machine wagera hai jo chhota farmer hai which is the bulk of india he doesn't want to be a farmer He tells his children के भाई तुम और कुछ करो पढ़ाई वढ़ाई करो नौकरी करो कुछ तो भी थोड़े पैसे भेज दो हमें गाँव में चलेंगे एंड वी डोंट यून रियलाइज दैट सो बेसिकली दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ आर फूड एंड दिस स्टोरी इज अ वेरी ओल्ड स्टोरी एंड आवर नंबर वन प्रोटीन फॉर द लॉन्गेस्ट टाइम वॉज बीफ नाउ दिस इज समथिंग लॉट ऑफ पीपल गेट अपसेट विथ टूडे बट राइट थ्रू द अर्ली हरप्पन पीरियड द हरप्पन पीरियड द लेट हरप्पन पीरियड ऑल द वे टू द हिस्टोरिकल पीरियड our number one protein was beef it's only after the advent of buddhism and the decline of meat eating that hinduism switches over from beef to a non beef diet and surprisingly the brahmins in a very interesting move become vegetarians now this doesn't mean people would get up in the morning and say chalo main aaj ek bail kaatunga mujhe mutton khana hai mm-hmm. it's not like that that's a huge animal there is no refrigeration agar tumhe use kaatna hai तो उसको पूरा खाना है एंड नोज टू टेल इज अ मैटर ऑफ फैट ये जो आजकल बहुत ही बड़ी बड़ी चीजें बोलते हैं ना लोग यूरोप में वी हैव नोज टू टेल ईटिंग अरे यार जक मार के यू हैव टू डू नोज टू टेल ईटिंग व्हेन यू हैव नो वेयर टू पुट इन द फ्रीजर एंड यू कैन अफोर्ड टू वेस्ट इट सो व्हेन वुड अ बुलक बी कट इट वुड बी कट ऑन अ डे व्हेन देयर वाज सम फेस्टिवल या देयर वाज सम इंपॉर्टेंट ओकेजन या कुछ शादी ब्याह हो रहा है ताकि वो पूरा खाया जा सके बाट बाट पे कि कितना बांटोगे ना तुम दोस्तों में यारों में so you have to be able to but out in such a way ke jab bhi wo bail kaatega tabhi us tum tumhare ko ek do kilo gosh dega wo so large animals right. become very difficult to manage right but that's kind of very interesting uh, you mentioned about uh, hindus shifting away from eating beef because of buddhism i'd love to hear more about that yes very much so uh, buddhism made meat eating less popular right uh jainism made meat eating completely not happening okay but the buddhists were not about don't eat it they were you should not eat it you should have ahimsa mm. okay okay uh, so the uh, one of the great buddhist stories actually says that one of the buddha's great disciples was actually a butcher mm-hmm. and in the story of angulimala the buddha sends angulimala to the butcher to learn basic buddhism so angulimala is shocked ke yaar tu mujhe kahan bhej rahe ho ye aadmi mere ko kaise dharm gyan dega to buddha usko samjhata hai ke this is his kartavya to his family This is his family business. Ah. He has to feed his family and take care of his family, and this is his role in society. Hmm. So, if he did not do it, he would be doing a disservice. Fascinating. That does not in any way make his faith less or more. So, there are very interesting stories like this uh, in literature, in religion, and you can not actually right. build things on this, you know. And uh, we see very interesting things. So, for example, Gujarat, which in, during the Harappan period sees so much meat eating. becomes predominantly a gujarati jain buddhist society you see meat eating go down fish eating almost disappears now imagine such a beautiful coast viraval se machli bombay aati hai the trawlers that dock at viraval uh-huh. their fish comes to bombay but mm-hmm. you see so little fish being eaten in gujarat so essentially when hinduism was resurgent at the end of the buddhist phase a lot of the things that the newer revamped version of hinduism did was in very many ways reflections of buddhism so for example this whole thing about vegetarians if you look at gujarat gujarat mm-hmm. is essentially vaishnav and the vaishnavites are the big vegetarians of india it's not the shaivites the shaivites are very happily mutton eating people we are kush with all of it we have got no problems but on the other hand the entire vaishnavite system is different 
Now, in certain areas like in the far east of India, Vaishnavites also eat fish because or kuch hai nahi bhai khane ko. But it is something that is not eaten with great passion. So the influence of Vaishnavism, the influence of Buddhism, the influence of Jainism, all these increase vegetarianism through the ages. And these are some very interesting phenomena in India. It's so dangerous to even talk about it today. It's so difficult to even research it today. If you tell someone that, bhai sahab, aapke purwaj 4,000 saal pehle gau ka maas khate the, angama ho jata hai. Hamare purwaj aisa kabhi kar hi nahi sakte. Arre bhai, kar hi nahi sakte the, kar rahe the. Hamare paas archaeology mein uska purava hai. Right. So, you know, a lot of things that we see as eating in archaeology. For example, today, when we cook with oil, hum kitna oil use karte hai. Purane zamane mein, you had to grow your own oil seed. So, your oil use was automatically limited. Predominantly, if you had cows, you had ghee. And again, there was only that much cream, so there was only that much ghee. So the addition of fat to food was less. Fried foods were eaten only for really special occasions. Abhi toh hum kuch bhi fry kar dete, kabhi bhi fry kar dete. And deep frying has become the norm ho gaya hai. Samose khate hai, bada bada khate hai, fafra khate hai, jilebi khate hai. And we all enjoy it. You can't deny it. It's the whole salt, fat, you know, uh, carbohydrate thing. But the fact is that we couldn't do this. And there were only two main oil seeds. Right. North of the Narmada, you had rai ka tel, mustard oil. South of the Narmada, you had sesame oil. And you know, there are different names for it. If you go to Kerala, they'll call it jinjali oil. But it's the same thing. It is basically til ka tel. Maharashtra mein bhi til ka tel. Gujarat mein bhi til ka tel. But with the coming of groundnut, people switch to it because, see, it's all about per acre tumhe kitna milta hai. Ek acre mein tumhe kitna groundnut milta hai versus aapko kitna til milta hai. और उसमें से कितना ऑयल निकलता है अरे यार ये ग्राउंडनट बहुत बढ़िया चीज है यू गेट बिगर क्रॉप यू गेट मोर ऑयल इन्वेस्टमेंट बाय फार्मर इज सेम उतनी मेहनत उतना ही खत सो सडनली ग्राउंडनट ऑयल इज अ वेरी गुड ऑयल टू यूज राइट सो एवरीबॉडी स्लोली स्लोली स्विचेस टू ग्राउंडनट बिकॉज़ इट्स चीपर वी डोंट वेरी ऑफन रियलाइज दैट दीस आर नॉट आवर ट्रेडिशनल ऑयल्स इट्स ओके बट वी शुड नो दीस थिंग्स हाउ मच ऑफ आवर फूड हैज कम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड हाउ मच ऑफ आवर स्पाइसेस हैव कम फ्रॉम आउटसाइड व्हेन आई टेल पीपल इन इंडिया टुडे you know educated people people in the food business is one thing but when you are in a rural area and you explain to people that uh, potatoes tomatoes chilies these are not indian and we have had these here in india for only last 300 or fewer years that india mein makka nahi hua karta tha makka ek 150 150 saal se itna popular ho gaya jab british ne usko badi matra mein introduce kiya sab jagah hum jau khate the barley khate the so you know these things people find it impossible i had a sardarji get very upset with me and say how dare you say that ye 150 saal se hi hum log uh, makke ka upadan kar rahe makke di roti to hamara traditional food hai i said nahi bhai sabka traditional food jau di roti hai aapne makke di roti baad mein chalu ki hai <laughs> and you can scream and shout and beat your chest and, and tear your uh, gireban if you want to but uh, facts are facts true so you know it becomes very difficult sometimes This is why I keep telling people authentic वाली जो बात है ना आप घर पे ही रखो आप मुझे मत बोलो क्या ऑथेंटिक है और क्या ऑथेंटिक नहीं है जो बनाया रेसिपी एंड इफ आई गेव यू दें रेसिपी ऑथेंटिसिटी वही खत्म हो जाएगी बिकॉज टेम्परेचर चेंज हो गया इंसान चेंज हो गया कुछ कुछ इनग्रीडियंट चेंज आएंगे automatically adjust ho jayega so authentic to hai hi nahi kuch duniya mein sir i'm just think if you are living in delhi the mutton you buy in delhi the mutton i buy in bombay correct breed of goat is only different udhar hi pehle mark aage uh-huh. pani is different udhar hi mark aage the masalas that i use are they of the same potency uh-huh. there is no standard potency of masala na sab jeera ek jaisa hota hai sab rai ek right. jaisi hoti hai aisa nahi hota hai so unless you package everything into a box and send it to me with instructions and a large bottle of water It's not going to be identical. It can't be identical. Exactly. That's all. That's all. Okay. So, one thing we do. One small break. We take a break. I'm going to bread. Why? Because bread. We have bread. Cheese. And cheese. We will talk about bread. After bread. 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 Why communication always needs to start with us. Misconduct is back with season three. Raghvi and Nisha tell us the real life story of Gangu by Kathiawadi. On audio, Gyan Kedar asks architect Fernando Velo about the future of maps in the digital era. 
Anand Kari, South Africa, to break down the history of India's most important ingredient, milk. And on Marathi Kirki Tunda Deshmukh's talk about Ravi Kiran Mandal and his contribution towards Marathi poetry. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, we've been doing a series of profiles of people within the office, so do check that out for sure. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any platforms you're listening on. And you can also check us out on YouTube. We have a page on our website, ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube, with a list of all our channels. We're also doing a small listener survey to better understand how you, the listener, responds to the advertising on our network. And also, we just want to know a little bit more about you. We would really appreciate it if you could spare a few minutes to fill it out. It will really help us build some better shows for you. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors on the network this week, SBI Life Insurance and Jupiter, a digital banking app. And we're back from the break. And Kurush, how do you have an interesting cheese for us to tell us? You know, uh, cheese is eaten in very many different ways and uh, in very many different yeah. manners. So over mm-hmm. the years, I've realized while catering that yeah. Indians love Amul cheese. We love processed cheese. Absolutely. And one of the most popular mm-hmm. items that we make at Katie's Kitchen is called our, our Hawaiian salad. Ah. Okay. Now, this mm-hmm. Hawaiian salad is not eaten in Hawaii. And uh, essentially, mm-hmm. it doesn't look like much when you look at mm-hmm. it. This is what it looks like. Okay. And the Hawaiian salad basically has chicken, pineapples, capsicums, celery, and a lot of chopped cheese. Mm-hmm. All brought together with mayonnaise. a little bit of tabasco some salt and pepper chilled and turned into this yummy thing called hawaiian salad jo audio pe sun rahe kurush is eating the hawaiian salad right now eating the hawaiian salad and making us hungry <laughs> just saying acha to ye india mein jo they are obsessed with processed cheese aur agar cheese le person ko bole to wo sochenge paneer cottage cheese chana aur koi zyada fancy ho economic elite ho to wo sochenge parmesan cheddar brie etc but india mein mozzarella but india mein now old types of cheese are making come back like kalari and uh, bundel bundel is that how you pronounce it tell us something about those kind of cheese bandel bandel so there have been a number of cheeses that have been made in india uh, what is cheese basically cheese is a way of preserving milk right tumhare paas hamesha saal bhar utna doodh nahi hota hai jab doodh hota hai tab uske sath dusri bhi cheeze hoti hai khane ke liye to aapko agar doodh store karna hai to aap doodh kaisa store karenge तो आपके पास दो ऑप्शन है एक तो आप घी बनाएंगे आप बहुत ही सॉल्टेड बटर भी बना सकते हैं हेवीली सॉल्टेड बटर क्योंकि बटर भी आफ्टर सम टाइम खराब हो जाता है क्योंकि उसमें काफी मात्रा में पानी होता है सी ऑल बटर हैज वाटर इन इट सो बटर टेंस टू गो रैंसिड इन द हीट आफ्टर सम टाइम बैक्टीरियल एक्शन हो जाता है तो यू हैव टू वेरी हेवीली सॉल्ट द बटर दैट मेक्स इट डिफिकल्ट टू ईट ऑन दी अदर हैंड इफ यू मेक बटर और यू डायरेक्टली टर्न द क्रीम इन टू घी और यू टर्न द बटर इन घी then you have basically removed all the water you also removed all the excess solids from it a good ghee should never go bad ghee ke upar kabhi fungus nahi lagna chahiye agar aap gheeli chamchiya kuch dale to dusri baat hai andar but as long as you keep your ghee properly ghee is virtually indestructible wo ek do saal barni mein baithe reh sakta hai so that was the option mainly that we took in india in our hot conditions whereas europe and places like that took the option of turning it into cheese so cheese was a predominant thing in europe and that is eastern and western europe eastern europe makes just as much cheese as western europe makes it's just a fallacy that all your cheese comes from france aisa nahi hai sirf france aur switzerland se cheese nahi aata hungary mein bhi mein bhi cheese hota hai romania mein bhi cheese hota hai russia mein bhi cheese hota hai ukraine mein bhi cheese hota hai so all of these areas have very very rich cheese making traditions and uh, these traditions are uh, virtually farm to farm hamare gaon mein gai ka doodh ka aisa cheese banta hai to uska naam lag gaya tumhare gaon mein bakri ka doodh ka aisa cheese banta hai to uska naam lag gaya so most cheeses are named after the place they have come from or the milk that is used in india cheese making traditions are very interesting traditional cheese making traditions in india you have the kalari cheese and this is again made in the cold weather by the uh, nomadic cattle keepers okay of the himalayan ranges so they have a classic cheese called kalari kalari is a very interesting cheese it's a cheese that uh, you know it needs to be cooked to be eaten it's not really a cheese that you eat by itself 
उसे कभी कभी मस्ती मस्ती में दूध की रोटी कहते हैं राइट right. और रोटी जैसे रहता है मोटी सी रोटी जैसे रहता है और उसे गर्म करते हैं तवे पे दोनों बाजुओं से और खाते हैं सो इट्स बेसिकली फैट सम अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट स्मॉल अमाउंट एंड डिसेंटिश अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन ऑल टूगेदर विच यू कैन पैक एंड टेक विथ यू एंड थोड़ा सा गर्म करके उसको खा लिया सो इट गिवज यू लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी वेन यूर वर्किंग इन अ कोल्ड एनवायरमेंट अलॉन्ग साइड दिस दर इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग चीज मेकिंग ट्रेडिशन which comes to us from a place called Bandel. So Bandel now का एक छोटा सा शहर है It's on the Hooghly in West Bengal. And uh, when the European powers came to India, they set up small small factories. तो ये जहाँ वो माल इकट्ठा करते थे उसको थोड़ा सा प्रोसेस करते थे फिर जब उनकी शिप्स आते थे तो वो लेके जाते थे तो ऐसा एक पोर्चुगीज टाउन था जिसका नाम बैंडल था तो कोलकाता से लेके एक लाइन से हुगली पे छोटे छोटे ऐसे शहर है तो एक फ्रेंच शहर था एक डच शहर था और एक पोर्चुगीज शहर था तो जो पोर्चुगीज लोगों का जो शहर था उसका नाम बैंडल था और ये चीज वहां से आती तो इसके भी दो प्रकार होते हैं छोटा सा गोल चीज होता है ये स्लाइटली चपटाया हुआ एक फ्रेश बैंडल चीज होता है और एक एज बैंडल चीज होता है उसे स्मोक करते हैं ताकि वो लंबे समय तक प्रिजर्व रहे तो उसे बहुत ही अच्छा स्मोकी थोड़ा स्ट्रॉन्ग स्लाइटली फंकी फ्लेवर रहता है और जो फ्रेश होता है इट्स अ वेरी नाइस सॉल्टी वेरी प्लेजेंट टेस्टिंग चीज इट्स लवली यू नो सदफ टू ग्रेट दिस ऑन टॉप ऑफ सैलड्स हमारे इंडियन सैलड्स में भी वो बहुत अच्छा जाता है तो एक अच्छी यू नो कचूबर बनाई तुमने खाने के साथ के लिए और उसके ऊपर भी ग्रेट कर दिया तो मजा आ जाता है सो वन ऑफ द माई एक्सपीरियंस विद इस चीज हैज बिन दैट वन ऑफ द कैफे दैट यूज टू वर्क हियर इन डेली कॉल कैफे लोटा तो वहाँ पर ना वी एक्चुअली वॉन्टेड टू यूज अ मेक ओनली देसी सैलड no olive oil no fancy firangi cheese so instead of using olive oil we used a smoked mustard oil and uh, for parmesan we use uh, bandel for that and it actually came from calcutta so the one of the people we knew sent us the cheese just think of it there is so much that we can keep alive these traditions when i went to calcutta and i first found out about bandel cheese i was shocked ke aisa bhi cheez ek tradition hai and there was just i think two people left who made it in uh, new hog market जो न्यू न्यू मार्केट है ना कलकत्ता में इंटरेस्टेड बैंडल चीज इज कैप्टेड अलाइव एंड नाउ एक्चुअली आई एम टोल्ड दैट देर इज मोर डिमांड फॉर इट देन एवर बिफोर विच इज गुड कलकत्ता ऑल्सो हैज अ जूश चीज ट्रेडिशन विच वेरी फ्यू पीपल नो अबाउट कलकत्ता हैज अ वेरी नाइस एंड वेरी वाइब्रेंट जूश कम्युनिटी ऑफकोर्स नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ दैम आर वेरी ओल्ड एंड द यंग पीपल हैव गॉन अवे to israel or to other places they have performed the aliyah as it's called you know the right to return to the promised land but there is a very very strong tradition of this cheese making process that was made only by the jews and essentially it was something that the jews made for the jews because the jews have a lot of restrictions on how milk should be treated how it should be eaten milk and meat should never be cooked together so they will never put butter or ghee in anything that is non veg and a lot of so they have dietary religious restrictions so this beautiful cheese used to be made by them which was a more or less fresh cheese and it would not be aged for too long and it would be eaten fresh during jewish festivals there is one old lady left in uh, calcutta who knows how to make it but for many years in the 60s and 70s there's a very famous bakery in uh, new market called nahums Nahums used to actually retail this cheese, and they used to, I am told, actually take orders for it. Uh, I have been to Nahums since the 90s, but I have never seen that cheese there. Sadly, uh, there is so that Bengal region is very rich in cheese, and by Bengal I mean across the border. So in Bangladesh there is a very interesting cheese that comes from Dhaka, again a traditional Indian cheese, not a European cheese or a European style cheese made. It's called paneer, P-O-N-I-R. Now you say, "Ah, that's the paneer." Hai. <laughs> Nei, wo paneer hai. So it's paneer. So it's made out of hot milk, and it comes as a ball of cheese, a slightly flattened ball. And when you cut it, it's full of holes, and it has a slightly springy, faintly rubbery texture. You know, it has a springy texture, so it doesn't have a crumbly texture, and it is full of holes. It's a gorgeous cheese to make sandwiches. Absolutely gorgeous, and if you don't know people from Dhaka, you will probably never get a chance to eat it. So my friend Kanishka, 
uh, from Calcutta. He used to work a lot in Dhaka. He told me about this when I was talking about bandel cheese. And I said, I not yet. So the next time he went to Dhaka, he brought some down and he made sure that somebody coming to Bombay brought it for me. Fabulous. Absolutely different. Like no cheese that I have eaten. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for just talking about this to a fellow foodie, it to baat nikalti nahi iske bare mein kabhi. So a lot of people will tell you that, uh, uh, you know, Indians don't make cheese because uh, it is against our religion. Aisa nahi hai. Uh, Ayurveda says you should not split milk. Theek hai, you should not split milk does not mean you cannot split milk. There's a lot of difference between the two. Sadaf, you tell me any mother or grandmother that you know, if you have a drink in the house, you will not be able to give it to the house. The tabar will be immediately poured into a cloth, tightened up and tied to the tap. Absolutely. And turned into paneer immediately. And then the water will be used as well. Yeah. Ah, probably the whey will also be used in a dal or something, so that it's not wasted. Yeah. And you will never even know that it was used. So, you know, uh, we very often realize that milk is spoiled only much later. Because we now buy it in bulk because we have refrigerators. I remember in my childhood, Parsi Dairy Farm ka bhaiya ji, as he was called, would come in his blue kurta with his khaki pants, short pants, carrying this big aluminum matka on his head, which had a seal. Every time it was filled, it was sealed so that there was no pilfering. And he would come in the morning and he would come in the afternoon and you could buy as little as 200 ml milk from him. Okay. That was a daily route. So, you know that 9 out of 10 days it will be the milk. And uh, you would use fresh milk both times so that it will not be cut. It will not be cut because there is no refrigeration. And in that moment, the fridges were also a little bit, you know, there's a very good chance things would turn to cheese very easily. <laughs> so, again, you know, uh, paneer making traditions, when they say, no, no, Portuguese brought paneer to India, I find it very difficult to believe this Portuguese brought paneer to India. Did they make it popular? Perhaps. Uh, did they necessarily bring it possible? Did they influence this commercially? Very possible. Because we know that the mithai we eat in Bengal today and that region, which is made out of chena, that mithai was not very popular till about 200 years ago. And it is a tradition of the last 200 years that this mithai has been, you know, more and more variations have been coming out. Till then, a lot of the mithai in the east was essentially made out of wheat. Jo balushai hoti hai, lobongo latika hoti hai. So, you know, meat and mawa was used to make, uh, meat and uh, nuts were used to make things. Meat or wheat? So, so, sorry, not meat, wheat, wheat, sorry. Uh, so, this was what was traditionally made. And there were, of course, halwas of different sorts that have always been made in India. Right from ghehu ka halwa, suji ka halwa. You know, ate ka halwa, all kinds of things are made. I eat one of the most beautiful halwas that I've eaten in my life was made out of burgul. Jo tuta hua gehu hota hai na. Uska jo halwa bana tha. So it was soaked overnight, then fried very slowly in ghee and uh, jaggery with ilaichi. And that was it. There was nothing else in it. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I could have eaten bowls of the damn stuff. So, you know, what I'm trying to say is that these... Traditions have existed in India of making sweet meats because India is where sugar comes from. India is the land that originally gave the world sugar. Sugar cane is from India. We know that at least for the last 1500 years from the Gupta period, we have evidence of the word shakkara. Yeah. And that if it was a full-fledged industry 1500 years ago, it definitely had roots that were earlier. So probably about a couple of thousand years of history of making Sugarcane, jaggery, and turning it into what we call today, we call it khand. This is khand, which is brown, coarse sugar. Hoti hai. So, we definitely will make it. Ha, it's a refined white sugar, hai, wo dusri baat hai. but uh, ultimately, it's all sugar. You know, you'll have a lot of people telling you things like, no, no, I have diabetes, so I only put a jaggery in my tea. I said, if jaggery or yeah. sugar or khand, it's not the same thing. Hai. Okay? If you have diabetes, then you have to put sugar. <laughs> you know, better than a substitute, you put a mug in It's the same thing. And there are different levels of sweetness. See, crystalline sugar, if it's a big crystal, it looks a little more sweet because there's more surface area. Less surface area, it looks a little less sweet. You know, traditionally, there is A, B and C sugar that is sold in all Mondays. So, we've had this tradition. We've had a tradition of sweet meats, but it was not widespread. 
we did not have a lot of sugar so essentially mm-hmm. if we are the land of sugar we've right. had sweet meats for the longest time not right. in the volume that we have today again because now we have large scale industrial sugar making capacity tab kya tha you would have to grow your own sugar cane tum ghehu banaoge ya sugar cane banaoge barish mein agar pehle aapko family ko feed karna hai aapke paas surplus jagah hogi thodi si kheti kheti bari karne ki to aap ganna laga sakte hain warna aap ganna nahi laga sakte and putting in a cash crop at that time at that you know saying main cash crop dalunga aur main ghehu khareed ke lunga was madness suicide we had very small quantities of sweets yes industrialization of sugar industrialization of milk urbanization these helped these businesses so when you look at these traditions also you will see for example the entire bengali tradition that you see of uh, sweet meats it's hugely influenced by what is happening in kolkata aisa nahi ki chote chote gaon mein chote chote shehron mein wo mithai nahi banti hai but look at the vast variety that happens in a place like kolkata why does it happen because there is buying power gaon mein khareed khareed ke kitni mithai kharidenge log and that's a beautiful thing that i'll tell you about bengal in bengal you can go to a mithai shop and buy one piece of mithai acha and he has boxes for it oh he has special boxes for it with his name paper boxes in which he'll put one piece of mithai packet and give it to you wow rubber band laga ke yeah and uh, traditionally the men would go to shop so you know you would always bring four pieces of mithai or five pieces of mithai back to eat with your meal on a daily basis so there would be paanch jane ghar mein paanch piece mithai hai sab log ko thali mein ek ek piece mithai mil jayega so that was a very interesting way of limiting consumption also right aajkal kya hai hum log jaate hain mithai ke dukaan mein aur box bhar ke mithai utha ke ghar pe leke aate hain aur mithai wala bhi bolta hai pao kilo to le lo pao kilo se kam kaisa denge फिर खराब हो जाएगा पासी हो जाएगा तुम खा लोगे। सो दीज आर द ट्रेंड्स दैट आर यू नो आर सेल्डम एवर नोटिस्ड बाय पीपल ये तुम्हारे hmm. नाक के नीचे hmm. हो रहा है इट जस्ट टेक्स अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ समबडी टू पॉइंट आउट टू यू कि लुक एट द कॉज एंड इफेक्ट स्पीकिंग ऑफ कॉज एंड इफेक्ट व्हाई आर दीस ट्रेडिशनल इंडियन चीजेस लाइक कलारी इवन छुरपी व्हाई आर दे एज पॉपुलर एज अ यूरोपियन चीजेस अगेन अर्बनाइजेशन these cheeses were not really made in urban areas they were not consumed in urban areas so when urban people started consuming cheese what cheese did they consume right they ch- they consume processed cheese and why because they were used to process cheese that was coming in with the right. army navy stores with the british and this was coming mm-hmm. as food for the british army and a lot of craft cheese used to come to india so i still remember when uh, when i was studying the history of amul and i found out that amul actually brought in a man from switzerland haan, to make haan. cheese at the factory and said ke basically apne wo craft, craft cheese banana k k wala craft na not craft wale jo cheese banana na nahi nahi k wala craft ha jo australian uh, company hai na ha so uh, the idea was ke main waise type ka cheese banana jo tin mein hum bhar ke uski lambi shelf life rahegi so when i was growing up craft was only available in tins it was horribly expensive luckily again being a shippies boy i was exp- you know i had experience of eating this cheese uh and then in india it was all about amul cheese and amul cheese came in those tins and after, much later it started coming mm-hmm. out of those mm-hmm. smaller cubes you know amul had a beautiful parmesan oh. cheese powder and all uh, didn't work didn't work so it was not parmesan but it was an amul cheese powder it didn't work there were other players also uh you know in the west coast for example the parsis traditionally make their own cheese oh uh it's something called topli nu paneer so this topli nu paneer so paneer being the very indian word for split milk that is coagulated together uh what they do is they split milk uh using rennet which comes from the inside of a chicken gizzard so chicken ka jo gizzard hota hai na jo petha bolte hain hum log use to uske andar ki jo skin hoti hai uske अंदर की स्किन निकाल के उसको फाइनली चॉप करते हैं और गरम गरम दूध में डाल देते हैं तो उसके जो एंजाइम्स होते हैं उससे दूध फट जाता है फिर उसको छन्नी में निकालते हैं कपड़े में से पास करते हैं इफ यू वांट या डायरेक्टली उसके जो कर्ड्स होते हैं वंस द कर्ड्स फॉर्म द चीज कर्ड्स यू स्कूप दम इन स्मॉल टोकरीज छोटी छोटी टोकरियाँ होती है जो हम बड़ी बास्केट बनाते हैं ना बड़ी टोकरी बनाते हैं हाँ तो ऐसे ही छोटी छोटी टोकरियाँ होती है इतने साइज की एंड उसमें वो कर्ड भरा जाता है 
और ऑटोमेटिकली उसकी वे वो टोकरी में से बाहर निकल जाती है पुट इन स्लोपिंग प्लेटफॉर्म एंड द वे कम्स आउट आफ्टर रफली अबाउट डिपेंडिंग ऑन वेयर यू आर एंड हाउ मच पेशेंस यू हैव आफ्टर अबाउट एन आवर यू टेक इट आउट इन यूर हैंड उल्टा एंड यू स्लाइड इट बैक इन सो वो एक साइड से वो बैठा हुआ है फिर उसको आप फ्लिप कर रहे हैं बेसिकली अच्छा सो अगेन इट अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ द वे कम्स आउट and what you get is a very very jelly like cheese uh, with the markings of the tokri on the outside so abhi bread mm. ke liye jo banneton aata hai na bahut hi popular hai bread banane mein wo banneton leke aao aur wo banneton ke markings hone chahiye bread ke upar hmm? and then your bread looks very pretty uh, well where does that come from you think this tokri would leave its marks its typical marks on the paneer and the paneer would get flattened and have you know thoda sa upar se aisa thoda sa niche se aisa and flat and it would have the tokri ka markings so then it would be slid into fresh water so you have fresh cold water and you sli- slide these paneers one by one into it i have known people who have actually used the way from it also uh, others will swear that you never use the way wo bahut jaldi khatta ho jata hai whatever that is the personal thing so these things are called topli na paneer or tokri na paneer and at one time they were very very popular amongst the parsis right. and also amongst the boris so the boris and the parsis are virtually <laughs> kissing cousins from gujarat you know and uh, one of the biggest manufacturers and suppliers to parsis was actually a bori gentleman whose surname oh. was panirwala so his name was fakir ji panirwala and he had a big office in chani road and virtually every single parsi caterer ordered topli paneer from him and they came on oh, the train wow. from surat so he had a big factory in surat where people were making this and it would be put into ice cold water uh, in milk cans and the milk cans would be closed and put on the train in ice cold water and would travel to bombay they would be decanted carefully and put back into ice cold water and sent to various wow. caterers all over bombay Sadly, Fakir Ji Paneer Wala's business has shut down a long time ago, and you know demand, supply, that kind of thing. He used to make a topli paneer that was this big okay. on special order. I still remember it. It was a nine-inch diameter ka topli paneer, and that was only made very, very special order, vagera, vagera, and all that. So I had the uh, very good fortune of actually meeting him when I was young, and my family was you know running the business. So this was a very big thing at Parsi weddings. So at Parsi weddings, in between the main courses, you know, like an amuse bouche, they would serve this topli uh-huh. nupani. Uh, now there is just one man left in Bombay who makes it uh, in large quantity, and he doesn't make it very professionally, sadly. But interestingly, because of the lack of anybody making it, four or five women in the Parsi communities have revived this tradition. So they don't have very large capacity. Fifty, hundred pieces is what they can make for you, but you can order pre-order forty-eight hours in advance, wow. and they will make for you. So luckily, this is something that has stayed alive. So if someone goes to Bombay and they eat it somewhere, yeah, but you have to, you know, you have to know who makes it and you have to order it in advance. And yes, you can. So I still mm-hmm. remember when Chef Joy from Bohemian in Calcutta came down to Bombay and he desperately wanted to taste it. I told him, I said, before you come down, उसे बोल दो और मैं ऑर्डर करवा लूँगा तुम्हारे लिए and we'll send it to your hotel. and he was most thrilled to get it <laughs> so it's something that i do for my clients uh, nowadays you know we get a lot of clients who come down from abroad for weddings chota chota wedding hota hai 30 mm-hmm. people 40 people ki shaadi hoti hai which is unheard of you know uh, when i was growing up an average function yeah. was 500 to 700 people average function today 500 to 700 people is like oh no amongst the parsis is not <laughs> Okay. Every year, you know, Sadaf, we do two, three functions of twelve hundred, fourteen hundred people. Every year. Abhi to, I think the last time I did one must have been six years ago. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because oh, this is utna buying capacity nahi bacha na. See, non-veg menu hai, mutton, chicken, fish hai. Uh, daru nahi rehga to paashi shadi nahi hoti hai. Uh, you know, <laughs> and everybody remembers the khana pina hai shadi. who remembers what the bride wore 6 6 months down the line so uh it becomes a very expensive affair and when you come from abroad you don't have family and friends jada karke thode in mean sadhe din log hai so they always insist on parsi paneer i do a lot of small functions 
because I have my own kitchen. I don't have to have a right. kitchen at the venue. So uh, we get a lot of orders and I make sure that uh, this young lady who makes for me, I tell her 48 hours in advance that God, if she's not in town and I have to tell my clients that she's not going to get it, then she's to But these are the these are the vagaries of something that is the cottage industry right so you know there are a lot of these traditions even amongst the, the sardars when you have paneer there are at least two three kinds of paneer depending on how it is made so uh, years years ago i learned that you must always honestly ask for malai paneer and pay extra for it you must not just say paneer when you go to a traditional punjabi paneer wala ask for malai paneer pay extra and get malai paneer you get a creamier softer paneer instead of something like rubber that you can bounce off the walls and play badminton with. <laughs> Good paneer never needs to be fried, Sadaf. If your paneer is truly taja, oh. so it doesn't need to be fried. If it's deep fried paneer, it means that it's basi paneer. Correct. And then deep fry and then choke it in water again. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So, you have to do the caterer, right? What will the next paneer be done? What will the next paneer be done? What will the <laughs> we are Indians. Speaking of animal renet, uh, I've I've read that in 2011, the FSSAI actually banned uh, animal renet Im- import and also declared that all milk and milk products coming into the country must be heat processed to kill bacteria. And it's a raw milk cheese to import hoti thi, wo kafi kam ho hai. and a lot of chefs began to opt for Indian cheese because of that. Yes and no. Uh, so, uh, there mm-hmm. are lots of kinds of rennet and there is a purely synthetic rennet also available Achha. where you synthesize the enzyme in a laboratory, okay, and which is completely animal free. So, uh, I have for years been using synthetic rennet. Uh, I mean, rather, I have been using it. The people who make paneer for mm-hmm. me have been using Topjina paneer. They've been using it. It comes in a small bottle from England. Mm-hmm. It's a plastic bottle, I think, a 20 ml bottle and the 20 ml bottle lasts Achha. you for three months. You don't have to worry about it. Kitna paneer bana bana hai, kitna bana hai. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is, uh, you know, if you'll ever get a chance, you should get this absolutely mad Parsi friend of mine on board. His name is Jangir Lawyer. And many, many, many years ago, before cheese making in India became popular, uh, Jangir was selling cheese made by Indian companies. So when I was growing up, there was a very interesting company called Kodai Cheese, mm-hmm. K-O-D-A-I. And they made traditional European style cheeses in India in Kodai Kanal. And they were the only company I knew in India that was making cheese. I'm talking about mm-hmm. the late 70s, early 80s. Okay. And definitely in the late 80s, I have bought and eaten a lot of their cheese. Alongside this, we had a very interesting uh, milk movement in Maharashtra. It was part of MAFCO. It was called ARE. Mm-hmm. A-A-R-E-Y. And they are the people who made uh, your famous uh, Oh, kya dood ki baat li aati na? Kya kya tete ho se? Uh, Amul dood. Energy. Energy. Uh-huh. Energy. Uh-huh. Energy. Energy. Mitha dood. Uh-huh. So, wo ARE dairy se aata tha. So, ARE wale khud ka ek block cheese banate the. It was a traditional waxed cheese. It came in a huge block this big. A uh, red color ka. But it was a, a rectangular uh, square section, rectangular lengthwise, and a big block of cheese. It was some of the most gorgeous Indian cheese I've eaten. And it was mm-hmm. like a Gouda, but you know, a, a softer, more delicious version of Gouda than any I have had since then. A mildly sweet Gouda, beautiful. Uh, sadly, uh, mm-hmm. didn't really work in India. You know, government agencies did not have that kind of marketing. So, Jangir started marketing uh, from okay. a company called Flanders. So, they were one of the first people in India to start making cheeses. I still remember their most popular cheese was called Smoked Scamorza. And he used to actually go from vendor to, you know, to restaurant to restaurant, hotel to hotel selling these cheeses. Today, he is the uncrowned king of imported cheese, ham, and all other imported products selling to every single five star uh, that there is. And he runs Fortune Gourmet, which is a fabulous company, which does some amazing imported products. They also do promote Indian products. But what happened was the market opened up. So with the opening up of India in the 90s, 
an entire market for cheese opened up. People were going abroad. They were eating these things there. They were looking for these things here. These things were getting imported into India in small quantities. And thoda sa, thoda ye bhi ho gaya ke, ha, we served a cheese platter, you know, with wine. Yeah. It was a bit yeah. snooty and snobbish in the early days. But look at how much cheese platters and wine are seen mm-hmm. all over mm-hmm. urban India today. You yeah. will see them in lots of middle class homes, which you never yeah. saw them in even 10 years ago. And uh, so many people have come into it. So my friend Mansi Jasani, who goes by the handle of Cheese Wali, she makes made-to-order cheese platters for people. She educates people about cheese. You got people like Namrata from Kase Cheese in Chennai, who are actually making cheese in Chennai. You've got the farm at Chennai, which is making some fabulous European style cheeses. So one by one by one, people have started making cheeses on their own. So Mansoor Ali, the famous uh, movie director, he retired from movies and he set up his own place in Uti making cheese. And he has a oh. cheese making course where you can visit his place and stay for three days and learn how to make cheese with him oh. at his homestay. So, you know, cheese making has now become more and more mainstream with urban India. And uh, you have an amazing set of people who are uh, making cheese in uh, the Himalayas now. There are three or four different people. There is one company mm-hmm. called Darima Farms. Uh, they make a nutmeg flavored zarai, which is one of the f- most fine new cheeses that I have eaten in the last 10 years. Kase Cheese in Chennai decided to make a kodi wow. flavored cheese. Okay, you know, you have flavored cheeses. So they said to yeah, use yeah. a typical South Indian podi. Huh. It was must, musty. It huh. became their biggest uh. selling cheese. Wow. See, yeah. because first time users, first time cheese eaters had a familiar taste. It was cheese, but yet it was familiar in the background. Right. So that podi cheese went a long way. And I remember Namrata talking about it, you know, and I was like, it makes, it makes so much sense. Yeah. That if you want to introduce cheese to people who don't eat cheese, how do you do it? You yeah. give them something familiar. And uh, there is the Center for Pastoralism and uh, they are based in uh, Gujarat mm-hmm. and they work out of Sarjeevan. And they've been working with the Maldhari community and the Rabari community who are nomadic cattle keepers. Now, uh, camel cattle keeping in India was a dying tradition. Very few people know that there are two separate very specific types of camels that are kept in India. There is the regular camel breed and there are sub-breeds in that. And there is one variety called the Kharai camel. The Kharai camel lives in the marshes of Kutch. It eats mangroves. So if you destroy the mangroves, there is nothing for the Kharai camel to eat. Or uska population was shrinking. Now they've realized the Kharai camel milk makes some of the most fabulous camel milk cheese. It's slightly salty. It's not the mm-hmm. best milk for making chai, but it's fabulous milk for making cheese. And everywhere all over the world, people are saying camel milk is a damn good thing to have. People are saying, ha, camel milk mein ye ye properties hai. Lactose intolerant people have camel milk. Uh, diabetic people, mm-hmm. this helps you a little bit on the side. So, you know, camel milk is suddenly becoming very popular the world over. Amul has started bottling it. So Amul is buying it from these people now and bottling it. And uh, what the uh, Center for Pastoralism wanted to do was, it had realized that a lot of youth, Indian pastoral youth were leaving their traditional family businesses, kabhi kuch hai nahi karne ko, and working at things that they felt didn't give them enough respect. Oh, yeah, I'm a pastoralist, I'm a car, I'm a building paint. What's my wajood? Kya keh rahe? So they said, let's empower these people to go back to pastoralism and make it sensible for them meaningful for them to do this. You know, they must get a livelihood out of it also. No? You must be nomads. You must make milk. So what if nobody is buying it? So uh, what they did was they took a group of these young men and they took them to Amul and they showed them what can be done with milk. If you milk, process can be Butter, ban sakta hai, ghee, ban sakta hai, milk powder, ban sakta hai, uh, chocolate. Ban sakti hai. Everything. They showed them all the various processes. And then they said, see, the idea was to empower the kids. So they said, now you tell us what you would like to make from the milk from your animals. So, you know, everybody thought that they will say something simple. They said, cheese. Humko cheese banana. So, pahile to the people who took them, they said, kya humne to khud, khud ka pair kaat dala. <laughs> By giving these children the choice. 
But they said, no, if this is what they want to do, we must also find out a way to empower them. They told them that we'll find somebody who will teach you how to make cheese out of your milk. So they got in touch with Namrata at Kasi Cheese and her team. And Namrata came down and spent time with these kids. And they made some, I think, 10 or 12 kinds of cheese in two months. Wow. wow. In two months. That's less of a time, you would say? Crazy. Quite less of time for, you know, somebody yeah. to get into this. Some of the cheeses honestly need a little help. Yeah. But for a first time, I was blown away that somebody could do this. And out of them, there was one camel milk cheese, which I swear to you, Sadaf, hmm. if you were retailing this in a cheese shop now, it would sell out. Wow. It was that good. And uh, there were a couple of uh, beautiful, fresh uh, goat's milk cheeses, chevre style cheeses. They were a little more acidic than they should be, but they were very nice cheese to eat. Given a little time and, you know, time to develop the product, I think these boys will be able to create something fabulous. At one point, they were making a cheese. You know, they were being told about how cheeses could be flavored with different things. And this was the time when mm. uh, soif was there. Na? So, jungly soif both hoti hai so, they just took some soif and added it to the cheese. And we had a beautiful cheese which was full of the flavors of soif. Mm -hmm. And this they did organically by themselves. So, we keep hearing of cumin in cheeses. How often have we heard of sauce with cheese? And, uh, you know, now they are creating a product which can be bought, which can be sold, which gives them a completely new market for their milk, where they can value add to their milk instead of selling milk at low rates to large consumers who then process it and sell it to other people. So they are taking out the middleman and creating their own cheese. So this kind of empowerment is possible only because there is consumption in India of these products now. Do you see there is now a better future of indigenous cheese of our local cheese oh yes oh yes oh yes um so one style of cheese that i didn't even dream would be popular in india is a mm -hmm. style of cheese called tom t-o-m-m-e -M -E. so we now have a tom de chennai we have a tom de bombay and the brie kind of fresh cheeses are very famous so we have a bombay brie ah. a bomb brie as it's called and we have mm -hmm. little, little cheese makers doing some absolutely fabulous stuff. And, you know, something else I tell people is anybody can make cheese. Anybody can make cheese at home. It takes a little patience. It takes a little love. And you have to be very careful. But it doesn't take a huge investment. It, As I said, it takes a little experimentation. But as Sadaf, as you know, any cooking takes experimentation absolutely. and experience. Okay. Oh, yeah. tum and patience. So it's exactly like that with cheese and you can make it. I, of course, I'm completely a lazy person who firmly believes that if other people are making their cheese, I will pay them and buy the cheese in small quantities for myself and give myself more variety of cheese Yeah. than, you know, making a big fat cheddar and having to eat only that. <laughs> but again, that said, there are such fabulous cheese makers. I mean, I'm sorry, my, my, my bheja is now getting too old, but there are such fabulous new cheese makers in India. And I was so impressed that cheese was being made in Chennai. You know, very hot, humid Chennai is making very good cheese. I can understand Uti making cheese, Kodekanal making cheese. I can understand cheese being made uh, in the hills of Kumau. But when I see cheese being made in Bombay and in uh, Chennai, then it's really happening. Interestingly, there is a brilliant group of uh, Christian monks who has been for years making cheese in Bangalore. And the, it is one of Bangalore's best kept secrets. They have a small menu of 8 or 10 kinds of cheeses which are available. You mm -hmm. have to send your Dunzo fellow to pick it up. Okay. But they regularly have gorgeous cheeses which they've been making. And you know, uh, monks and monasteries have been making cheeses all over yeah. Europe for the longest time ever. So this gentleman learned over there and came back from one of the monasteries in Europe. And he makes the most beautiful Italian style cheeses in Bangalore. So, you know, if you do Italian monk Bangalore cheese, you'll probably find it on Google. If not, I'm sure. I'm just looking for it. Next, I keep going to Bangalore. So this time I go to Bangalore, I'm going to have some. Must cheese. And with that, we are towards the end of our episode. Uh, typically, end of episode, we have all these other fun. Or, uh, ye hota hai, 
favorite underrated and overrated uh, products <laughs> so kush your favorite cheese indigenous cheese favorite indigenous cheese oof that's a tall one i really like a kalari because i feel it's very different from any other thing absolutely cheese. uh so i'm probably you know at the same time being a parsi thoda sa you know love for toplino paneer can't go away wo thoda dna mein wrapped up hai hamare naso mein topli paneer so kaladi i know is is best way to eat kaladi is kulcha which is also popular in jammu as as kaladi kulcha uh but what is your favorite way of eating gently fry it in a little bit of butter or even oil i mean i really like it in a good olive oil because i think that adds flavor to the kaladi fry it on both sides and if you can afford to have two stoves on heat your kulcha on the other side when your kalari is ready flip it over close your kulcha and eat it straight you it takes beautifully to flavors you it takes beautifully to indian chutneys it takes beautifully to indian achar oils so i would recommend that you heat your kulcha oil from nice nimbu ka achar ya aam ka achar ya mirchi ka achar so that goes very well with it and what would be your overrated cheese indian processed cheeses are not really cheese and in that sliced cheeses are even less cheese so you know processed cheeses are bad enough yeah but we grew up on them come on you can't say no to a good pizza with oodles of amul cheese on top put in that little you know gratinating otg and turned crisp on the top okay you can't say no to that. come how can you say no to that but uh the sliced cheese which everybody loves and uh, is mad about is less than 30% cheese what is the rest of it so the rest of it is emulsifiers and uh, permitted this permitted that m32 g47 whatever those bits and pieces of chemicals are available i mean if it makes people happy to eat that they should eat that i got nothing against it what i really have which upsets me is when you look at a packet of amul cheese for example or amul milk for example or amul butter for example all three of which i consume uh, before you say anything else you will not find which mm. milk it is have you thought of it look at an amul butter packet does it tell you kaun se doodh ka bana hua hai yeah. doodh ka bana hua hai butter hai bhai ye gai ka hai bhais ka hai ya uh, kaun se janavar ka hai it doesn't tell you now the same packet when you go abroad made by amul in india and sold abroad tells you what it is that it is a mix right. of buffalo yeah. and yeah. cow milk so i find that you know i find it i don't know unnecessary cloak and dagger because in india we get far better mm-hmm. fat content in buffalo milk i am a great fan of buffalo milk i don't like cow milk very much especially indian cows i find it i just find it different mm-hmm. because i i grew up on buffalo milk and i like the nice fatty rich buffalo milk uh, and i'm fat uh, but uh, you know i find it wrong that you don't tell people yeah. what goes inside their milk what go, what milk goes inside their products i think i think companies should be made to tell see govardhan for example has made an entire brand by saying cows milk butter cows milk ghee cows milk cheese so why can't you and there are new brands coming up uh, milk brands which talk about the cows they use which which type of cow they use which type of buffalo they use they are also idiots who tell you about a2 milk there is I'm no such idiots. thing as a2 milk <laughs> the last podcast of ours on milk he has mentioned about a2 milk <laughs> there is no such thing as a2 milk scientifically there is no difference between a1 and a2 mm-hmm. cattle milk it will not oh my god we all got diabetes because you've been drinking a1 milk all these years and drink a2 milk and your diabetes will go away your heart trouble will go away absolute rubbish <laughs> absolute i'd love to talk about that with you rubbish but we are fine thing, <laughs> yeah you know, uh, sorry but you know and finally this whole thing about uh, full moon ghee look it up guys this is my parting shot look up full moon ghee on the internet you will blow your brains out we'll check it out and what would be the underrated cheese hmm many many cheeses are underrated i mean i don't know where i would start so like i said uh, the darima farm zarai very underrated uh, a lot of uh, beautiful buffalo milk uh, fresh cheese styles that are being made by 
small cheese makers in Bombay are very underrated. Uh, mm, very interesting yaks meat cheese that comes from uh, Nepal. It's not the churpi. Churpi is, you know, cheese and then dried and turned into little bits of hard plastic which you have to put in the side of your mouth and try to chew on. I It's never worked for me because I didn't grow up with it. But you get a beautiful European style wheel, massive wheels of yak cheese. For years, the original uh, uh, German bakery before the sad, very, very sad blasts and then, I mean, this German bakery today is, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's not the German bakery I grew up with in Pune. They used to always have a wheel and they used to sell it by weight. And that is one of the most underrated cheeses I eat. Beautiful hard cheese. Truly beautiful yak's milk hard cheese. Yeah, I've, I've had some of these uh, yak cheese in uh, Darjeeling as well. Um, a few of the places. Um, and I, I think it gets... One has to get used to it because of the very different kind of uh, flavors that has attached. Yes, a bit funky. Yes, I agree with you. Khayat, on that note, ab hum karte hain dukan band. It is time for wrap up, and uh, so many cheese ki baat ho chuki hai. Uh, it is time you, as Kudush said, whatever cheese you prefer, put it up and eat it <laughs> because that's the way. Na Thank you. Cheese ko cheese khana acha lagta hai. Na cheese ko cheese. So that's that's the. Title of the episode. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Absolute fun. You you are enjoyed a treasure of this. knowledge when it comes to food. Is baat to ham ham cheese kya on baat kare the, but we'd love to have you on again to talk about something else completely, I'm, which I'm sure you can ace as well. Inshallah, why not? If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM Podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at the rate IVM Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to me on Twitter, I am Hussain Sadaf One, and on Instagram, I am Sadaf Underscore Hussain. You can reach out to Alchit on Twitter at the rate Band Tofu, and on Instagram at the rate The Hustle Glutton. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey where you can fill out the survey. Don't you think that if everyone around you is getting smart, you better be smarter? Hey there, I'm the traveling professor Siddharth Deshmukh and I'm back with season 2 of my podcast to make you smarter. Smarter with Sid. What's this season's focus about? Well, it's about 10 minute nuggets that will make you stand out at work. It's time to go from smart to smarter. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday and become smarter with Sid.